What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today I'm going to be going over all six unique horses that you can get in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you didn't know, there are a total of six unique horses found in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. One is Epona and Amiibo exclusive, but there are five unique horses that you could just find in game without any amiibo whatsoever. Opponent is only available if you have the Super Smash Brothers link or the Twilight Princess link. That's gonna get you Epona one time only, scan it in, register it at a stable, and you're good to go. It has four stats and strength, speed, stamina. It cannot pull anything. You can't customize its hair, its saddle, or anything else, and it's gonna come as a gentle temperament, max bond, as soon as you get it. We're done talking about Epona. The first horse that we're going to be getting is going to be the giant white stallion located over here at the Lake of the Horse God. If you have unlocked the Highland Stable, it's going to be a quick horsey trip down this way. As you cross over the Horse God Bridge and approach the Lake of the Horse God, you're going to be seeing these two guys over here. They're actually going to be talking about the giant white stallion, but we're just going to head on over there. If you're familiar, this is the location that Melania was, the Horse God, during Breath of the Wild. And fantastic place for you to get some butterflies if you need them. Now the giant white stallion isn't very afraid of people. Do not approach it from the back though. And once you get close to its side, you're gonna... Okay, you need to go a little bit faster than slow. From here, you have to hit L very, very, very quickly. Giant stallions take significantly more love and affection for you to tame them. The giant white stallion is incapable of sprinting. However, it is very fast. After you get your giant white stallion, make sure you talk to these gentlemen over here. They're going to be so impressed that you got yourself a giant white stallion. Now be sure to take your giant white stallion and bring it all the way back to the stable. That way you can register it for yourself. The giant white stallion has stats of 5200. Zero, zero. Giant white stallion is going to be one of the unique horses that you are not allowed to change its equipment or its hair or anything else about it. So once you get it, this is how it looks and it's going to be looking like that forever. Next up, we're going to be talking about Zelda's white stallion. Next, we're going to be talking about Zelda's Royal Horse. Now, here's the thing. As soon as you booted up Tears of the Kingdom for the first time, it imported your save data from Breath of the Wild and transferred your horses over. If you got Zelda's horse in Breath of the Wild, then it was transferred over into Tears of the Kingdom. However, if you didn't obtain Zelda's horse in Breath of the Wild, at the end of your time playing Breath of the Wild, it was still in the wild. So you can still catch it here in Tears of the Kingdom. Zelda's royal horse has stats of 4353, wild temperament. My bond is 69, nice. In order to get Zelda's royal white horse, you need to make your way above Skull Lake here in Akala. At this marker right here, you're gonna be able to find the white horse and tame it for yourself. Ride it all the way back to the stable, register it, and you're good to go. Unlike the giant white stallion, if you catch the regular white horse, you're able to change anything about its mane or its equipment. You could put a towing harness on it or whatever you want to do, you're good to go. Keep in mind, you need to get enough pony points to unlock certain features and equipment. The next horse we're going to be looking at is going to be Ganon's horse, who has stats of 5, 2, 0, 0, and wild. Just like the giant white horse, it cannot sprint forward and you cannot put a towing harness on it. And Ganon's horse is available one of two ways. One, if you caught it during Breath of the Wild, then it no longer existed in the wild and imported with your save data and you already have it L -l 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 is a big horse. Or if you didn't catch it in Breath of the Wild, you can get it here in Tears of the Kingdom. In Tears of the Kingdom, we're gonna go from the Hateno H at Tech Lab and we're gonna be going here to Hateno Bay. If you make your way out here to Hateno Bay, it's gonna be very obvious which one is the giant horse. It's the one that you can see from the sky. If you have enough stamina, feel free to just glide down right on it. Giant stallions take a lot of soothing in order for you to catch it, but once you do, you're good. Now let me tell you, you are in for quite a journey. From Hateno Bay, you're going to need to go up Hateno Beach, this pathway, all throughout all of Hateno Village, down the pathways down here, through Fort Hateno, all the way to the Dueling Peak Stable, and that is the closest stable for you to register your horse. Plenty of time for you to spam L on your way back and get its affection up completely. It wasn't that bad, it was seven minutes to get back here. 
uh, despite this horse not listening to me at all. The giant black stallion has stats of 5200. Zero, zero. You cannot customize its saddle or its mane or its equipment or anything else like that. And it doesn't matter if you obtained the horse in Tears of the Kingdom like I did in this game or if you imported it from Breath of the Wild like I did in this game. It's still the exact same horse. It makes sense because it's still the same world. Next, we're going to be getting the new unique horse named Spot. In Lookout Landing, you need to come over here and speak to these two gentlemen that are next to a mini horse stable. Grab the one plank of wood that's near them and just go ahead and complete the roof for them. It'll just kind of fall into place perfectly. After that point, Carson is going to be complete with the mini stable over here and Lester is going to be running it. So now this fully functions as a stable for you. Now, after you fix the mini stable, Lester may or may not have a quest marker above his head. He's going to say what rod and luck and you're going to see that quest marker. If you do not see the quest marker, that means you have to progress more in the story. In my game that only has one part of regional phenomenon complete, it is not there. However, in my game that has done many story beats, but not yet beat in the game, I am able to get this quest. So, so if Lester doesn't have this quest, you just got to play through the main story a little bit more. And I took out a horse and I didn't realize that it was uh, my, my pulling horse. <laughs> the mini stable can't change equipment. Anyways, in order to find spot and help out this quest, all you need to do is make your way outside of the stable. And if we look forward, that right there is Spot. He's He has a unique color combination that includes spots, and his hair is already done. Keep in mind the easiest way to get a horse is to just freeze it in its tracks, and as soon as it cracks out, we're gonna hop on top, and it doesn't take that much to soothe it. From here, all we have to do is bring Spot back to Lester here at the mini stable. Spot is going to be the only white slash beige horse with black spots on him completely. After you complete the quest with Lester, you then have to speak to him again if you want to be able to register the horse. Spot has stats of 4332 Wild Temperament. Even though the horse's name was Spot, you are welcome to change it if you want to. I don't want to. The sixth and final horse that we're going to be taking a look at today is going to be Zelda's Golden Horse, which here at the Snowfield Stable, right outside of the Tabantha Hebra region. If you came here earlier, you may have seen a Golden Horse inside of this stable. But after you go over to the Lucky Clover Gazette and begin the quest line for the Froggy Armor, you can come over here and speak with Penn. And the story here is Zelda came by and Zelda's horse was all like, nah dog, and then just bounced. That's a quick summary of all the text that they just said. The poor horse galloped north. That's all the information that you get and that there is going to be a huge monster that way. You're welcome to take a horse and make your way here to the North Tabantha Snowfield or fast travel from the shrine. I am going to be going from the Sky Island. As you begin your descent into the snowfield, you're going to be able to look around and over there is going to be the giant monster that they were talking about, which is a Frost Gleok. You do not have to battle the Frost Gleok. And after I descended below 460 meters, if I look straight down, it's a little hard to tell in the snowstorm. Oh, no, it's not. There it is. It's shiny and gold. If you want to, you just go ahead, glide on down, land right on the horse. <laughs> you know what? No, I'm I'm going to keep that in. <laughs> I can't always land on the horses perfectly. Now you just go. Land right on the horse. And now all that's left is to take Golden Horse back to the stable. Again, you do not have to initiate combat with the giant Frost Cleok. And I gotta say, I really love the way the Golden Horse looks. It's not only golden colored, it's actually sort of metallic looking. So it does have some level of reflections to it. Again, not gonna initiate with the Cleok. Oh, he initiated with me. Okay, we're just gonna go faster now. So because it does have these metallic reflections, I guess you could technically call it a shiny horse. <laughs> that's a, that's a Pokemon joke. After this, we just come back to Snowfield Stable and speak with Pen. Doing this quest gets us the Royal Bridle and the Royal Saddle. You get a free energizing elixir for doing this quest to be like, hey, good job with the horses. And you get a purple rupee or a different rupee, depending on how well you've progressed with the Lucky Clover quest line. Apparently for me, not a lot. Bye bye. From here, do not forget to go over and register this horse as one of your own. The golden horse has stats of four, four, three, and two. Yep, I know, so creative with the names. It's very appropriate to now go ahead, put the royal saddle, and if you want to, you could even go ahead and change the mane. From the braided mane that it comes as a default, 
I think I really like it with the floral mane. And there you go. There's going to be all six unique horses in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications for more Tears of the Kingdom content. Until next time, Austin John out.